Okay, and so now as we wrap this up, as we come to the end, I want to make sure that you understand there's other ways of dealing with projects. You don't have to do the lockstep. Everything written down, I's dotted and T's crossed, and there's a reason for that. Let me just talk for a second about why. As you look at project management, stand of an agile project, you have to knock everything. You don't say what it is is going to be involved in each part of this, your speculations. You don't have every answer. Agile is means quick, movable and flexible and so what you do is instead of writing a huge document document every task that's going to take place in your documentation that you might in a project management institute type of project instead you're going to be lighter here you're going to do some things on the whiteboard write stuff on the whiteboard you're going to draw a picture of it and those things are going to be your rules for starting your project and once you've got that down then you're going to move to the next step only capturing what you have to to keep the communication alive you see a little different attitude here. Keep the communication alive. Be flexible. At the same time, you have to solidify things enough and make decisions enough to know what your budget's going to be, to know what you can and can't do, to kind of draw lines about what your product is going to be, what your finished result will be. So as you're working with this type of a fashion, let's get it in a little bit more, a little funner way. I like to look at this picture a little better because the picture I have for this next takes us and puts it into a circle and I like that agile project management actually the book agile project management has a subtitle which I think is important for us to look at creating innovative products I like that and it's talked about specifically in the idea of products and so there's so much we can do in this, and it starts off with, in the ideas page, you've got it going on, but aside from the ideas, you have this envision stage. Now the envision stage is most important because there you start off with the end in mind. They actually have you suggest that you would build your finished product, put the cover on it, list all the features, what's it going to feel like, what's it going to look like, how's it meet a need, what need does it meet, remember? As we're talking about our audience now, that's where we need to start anyway, isn't it? Identifying the audience and matching with that audience the product that meets their needs, fills their, fills their, fixes their problem, solves their pain, is that solution. That marriage is what's so critical. That's why I like this because you start off with that finished product and how it matches with that audience. If you haven't done that yet, think about that finished product that you're going to create for this period of time, next 90 days, okay, so even less than 90 days, but as you look at that, as you assemble that, what's it look like? In fact, make the cover. Why not plan the cover now? Put the title on it now. Why don't you even start selling that? You can pre-sell some of this stuff out on a website today without it having it finished. Makes you get it done sooner, doesn't it? So that's one of the things I love about Envision. Then also, as you look at the speculate, speculate area, what Jim Highsmith suggests is that you put together a product docu a product data sheet and again you identify what it is and what isn't in the product what can and can't be done all of these pieces come together so then you start to explore now you've got a list a big list of all the things you want to get done and as you explore it kind of molds itself down and it gels to what really the audience needs what's the most important thing for them and you start with it and so the time frame if you fix a time frame, the amount of stuff you do in that time frame can expand and contract. Some of us go on and on and on because we've got this list and we're going to get the whole thing done. Really? Maybe the time frame is what needs to be bound and what we get finished might be smaller, but we can deliver on that. And delivering on that's really what's key. Getting the speed of implementation, getting it out there. So explore what you can, what you can't do within the realm of what you speculated on. And then of course you're going to adopt the pieces that match. What really, here's item one, it's done, boom, it's out. And you might actually deliver a small product first and then go back and re-add on to it and re-add on to it, make it better. So maybe you put together a video series and then you come back through and you do the transcripts and give the audio series and you come back through and you put together the study guides and you come back through and enhance it with some interviews and some stories pretty soon your product simple delivered out the door first gets added on 
add it on, add it on. And pretty soon you've got a whole course, if you will, of valuable, viable information, all congruent with itself that meets the need. But you didn't have to build the huge thing first, only to find out the audience maybe wasn't interested. Market the little piece first, and then you come back on. So you see why I'm kind of passionate about this kind of project management. You're flowing through as you're adopting things. But then when you get to the end and you've run into some other problems, as you're closing out, sometimes people are going away from the project. They're done. The time frame's over. I'm out of here. That's okay. But know again that it's harder to finish a product at the end, that last 3 to 5%, especially if you want a high quality. People are tired. We've written this thing five times. We've hashed it over seven times. Do we have to go through it and do it one more time? Yeah, we've got spelling errors still. We've got this side of the other. How do you raise that quality to its highest level? Well, that's part of what you set the expectations as you're in your speculation stage. What is quality? What level are you going to work at? And how are you going to deliver that? And then, of course, as you're, as you're adopting it, how do you finish that out? So as you come to the close, you can wrap things up at the level that you want them to be. Again, maybe simplifying some things, but keeping the quality high. Maybe it's higher quality, smaller deliverable. Maybe it's lower quality, but higher quantity. You see, you have to make those kinds of decisions up front in your project, and hence, and that's why we're talking about it now. So I look at it this way. Your, your whole world in terms of project management kind of fits into a couple of realms. You're going to start with um, a simple world that's yours. That world is maybe your personal world about the projects that you're working with. And those projects, of course, start off being really simple and maybe bound by some very hard timelines. So that's where you start. And then as you expand and you start to include more people, maybe it looks kind of like this. And then you grow and grow. And pretty soon, you grow to the point where you have a project that actually is bigger than you and more involved than you. And at some place along that timeline, as your project gets bigger and bigger and bigger, that you're going to need to do a couple of things. You're going to need to maybe look at transitioning to a public tool. Maybe here when you started, you only had two or three people, and you could share those tasks, and you kept the communication fairly alive. But as you expand over to a larger group of people with your project management, then you need to change the tool that you're working with change the ways you approach it. Maybe the launch, the envisioning stage, or the speculation stage is a huge party with everybody having a come together in an actual physical meeting someplace. Maybe it's an event. And maybe the closeout of your product is also an event. And you have the launch of the marketing of the product. You see, this is the fun part about project management. Small, large skills are transferable. They're applicable in all areas of your life. And so I suggest to you that you wouldn't stop with just personal development and personal performance patterns. Begin to envision those as the fundamental foundations for the larger picture, for where you can be in a, as a profitable producer. So that's our webinar for today. I'm grateful that you were able to be with us through this whole process of looking at project management from the PMI standpoint, where Project Management Institute has their website. And you can go through and look at their resources. You can go through and looking at some of the things they're doing in terms of education. That's where I got some of those charts that you saw earlier. You can also look at this whole thing through the eyes of these different steps. Notice they're very similar, but some of the attitudes that you have in each of those ways of working are different. And you can also remember to use the tools that are available to you in such things like Toodledo or Nosby as a great starting place for teaching you the foundations of project management for the larger version. And then you can play with some of these open source or free tools, free in terms of simple to start with. And you can go about using them with something like Minimoon. Like I said, there's hundreds of these, and we'd be happy to share many others with you that we've played with over the years. Or finally, work within some projects on a free open source tool. Maybe not as pretty, but all the fundamentals are there to help you in your project management. So with that, I appreciate your hanging on for the end of this. I hope that you find these courses useful and beneficial to you. Some of you are saying, but Jim, how did you do this stuff? I recorded this particular parts of the video with a tool called, let's see if I can get the site up here for you, called Screencast-O-Matic. 
and I paid the $9 for the whole year to have the name removed off of it and it allows me to record up to 60 minutes at a time and I can post up 15 minutes at a time onto their website I can also post it off to other places and so it allows me to do the camera thing that you're seeing here camera and camera really a simple interface and it's kind of cool to use so I look forward to uh, working with these kinds of tools moving forward and again do the best you can with this project management stuff start to look at your product and seeing how you're going to get it nailed down over the next few weeks and the steps that are required to get that done next time we meet we'll be going through those steps and how to pull that off thank you and have a great day see you